In the digital era, over-reliance on the internet to find jobs is limiting your ability to find opportunities because many jobs are not posted online. How many jobs are out there that you don't know about? And what can you do about it? And what about the all-important interview process? Most of us interview when we need to, not because we like to. And how do you prepare for it? Many people rely on their resumes to do their speaking for them. And even if you have a good resume, all it's meant to do is get you in the door and seated before a hiring manager. At that moment, your resume has fulfilled its purpose. There's a lot of process ahead of you. What are you going to do? What are you going to say to outshine others who want the same job? My name is Michael Mayer. I've been a recruiter for over 25 years on two different continents. I work closely with both hiring managers and job seekers, working closely with them throughout the entire process. I have an insight that is rare that few others have. And with this experience, I teach and empower people how to better help themselves to win the job they want. I challenge people to learn or relearn the soft skills that are being lost in a single generation. The very soft skills that we used to take for granted. Take a few minutes to review this information and consider how I can deliver this to your students, groups, or organization. We're going to be talking about a lot of stuff. Everything that you would have to do from the moment you begin to look for a job right on through until you accept an offer, even resignation. We're going to talk about everything. Over the last 25 years, I know the interview process inside and out. Here's why. How much money do you want in a first interview? Well, let's see. They're talking about salary, but um, I don't know. Uh, is there a bonus, personal, discretionary, group, team bonus? Um, expense account? Is there a car allowance? Is there a company car? Do you have bonus payout monthly, twice yearly, quarterly? Do you have company paid child care? What's your vacation policy? Um, what kind of peripherals? Do you provide Blackberry notebook? Do you have further professional development? Do you, do you pay and contribute to further education if I want to get my master's degree? These are all money questions, right? And they say, how much money do you want? Salary plus bonus. Most places have a bonus of some kind. OK, bonus. Is it a personal bonus? Most jobs, it's personal and company performance bonus. Discretionary bonus, you know what discretionary bonus be means? If they feel like it. Company bonus, group bonus, team bonus, all right, then when is it paid out? Twice yearly, monthly, quarterly, yearly? Extra benefits, do you pay for a fitness club membership? Car allowance or company car? Wait a minute, do we even know about the job yet? First interview, they're asking you about money. How in the heck are you supposed to answer that question? Okay? Like I say, say an arbitrary number that's too high, they probably won't call you back to say, oh, we can get rid of this one. They want too much money. Say a number too low, <laughs> this is a good one. How about this? You say a, a, a low number. If you say a low number and you progress through the interview process and you get to the near final interview, and you have learned that this job requires more than I expected. I'm going to ask for more money. Common sense, right? You get to the end and they make you an offer and you say, well, you know, I'm going to need more money. But in the first interview, you said you would take this amount. So there's so many ways it can be turned against you. So I just want you to concentrate on learning about the job. But how do you avoid that question? I want you to sidestep it. Because, after all, what's more important, the money or opportunity? I'm always careful when I recruit somebody, I tell them, okay, let's say that this job is something you're interested in, and at the end, your company doesn't want to let you go. What could they do to keep you? Well, it depends on how much money they offer me. I don't represent that person. I'm not going to waste my time or my client's time sending that person in. Money's important. We discussed it. But the opportunity is important. Here's something that's rather direct and hitting you between the eyes. The best paying job that sucks is not the best job. It's not just about money. You want to diffuse this question, okay? 
How much money do you want? You know, this is our first meeting. I don't know enough about the job yet to determine what to ask for. And, you know, maybe you don't know enough about me yet to determine how much I would be worthy of earning. That's a fair statement, isn't it? It's a true statement. And this is what I think you should try, attempt to convey. Second interview and beyond. Money is a fine topic. Nothing wrong with it. Engage. Talk all you want. You know a little bit about the job. First interview, I suggest you try to avoid it. You, you don't want to jump ahead. Don't get sucked into the money trap because often with human resources, that's what it is. Here's another thing to consider. Human resources, unless anyone in here a human resource specialist going to do a career in human resources? Okay, guess what? Human resources is never going to hire you. They don't make job offer. They do, the, they do the administrative stuff. They type up the job offer. They may tell you about the benefits. They send it to you. They may do the administrative part. Guess who's doing the hiring? The hiring manager, not human resources. Human resources role, a long time ago, they were called personnel. They were the personnel department. That's all they did. Now they've, you know, they've lent themselves more importance. They are an important entity, no doubt about it. But they don't hire. Hiring managers hire. So the details are with the hiring manager. So when it comes to the money question, okay, when it comes to the comp and ben, the compensation and benefits time, near the end of the interview process, yeah, they can help you then. But in a first interview when they say, how much money do you want? Don't jump into that trap. Try to sidestep it. If you can, great. If you can't, you did the best you could. The mistake that people make is they sit in the interview and they nod their head in agreement. They answer questions only when they're asked. And for some reason, people think that they're not supposed to ask questions. Well, if I ask questions, you know, they might not like it. Or if I ask too many questions, the only way you're going to find out about the job is to ask questions. Okay? The job description that you answer has nothing in it. There's nothing. Besides that, I mean, it, it's a bare bones, basic, human resource generated job description. Human resources doesn't know the details of the job because they've got a gazillion jobs they're posting. They don't know. You've got to get to a hiring manager and you've got to ask questions. So you need to ask questions. You should go into an interview with questions that you want to ask. Some will be resolved during the meeting. Others you'll ask and you'll develop during the meeting and take notes. You should take notes. Okay, I, I said yesterday, if you're worried that they think you're not paying attention, look them in the eye, scribble on the pad, you'll have trouble understanding it later, but you have the notes. Take notes. You should. All right. Examples of good questions. Now, I don't care when you ask this. For example, if you ask all these questions in a, in a first interview, okay, you know, it's a little demanding in a first meeting. But during the process, I want you to ask these questions sometime between the first interview and when you get an offer. Okay, so for example, why is the position open? What, what, what might they tell you? Okay, what if they say, well, the position's open because the person was promoted. That's a good sign. Cool. What if they say, well, uh, that person didn't work out. They're no, there's no one in the position. We got rid of them. They left, whatever. Oh, okay, that's interesting. My very next question is, how long has the position been open? Or how long were they in that position? Because what if they say, uh, well, the person that was in that position, they're no longer here. Oh, really? How long were they in the position? Three months. Aha, uh -huh, okay. And... Um, what about the person before that? How long were they in the position? Three months. Do you want this job? Investigate it. There might be good reason. But uh, uh, this is interesting. I need, to, I need to dig deeper. I need to find out what's going on here. When do you want to find out that you, got a, 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 that you took a crappy job? Do you want to find out in the interview process or your first time meeting other employees at the water cooler or at the coffee maker? And they say, oh, who are you? Oh, I'm so-and-so. I took XYZ position. And they go, you took that position? If you don't ask questions, you won't know. How long has the position been open? It just opened last week. OK, good. How long has this position been open? Six months. Mm -hmm. Six months, huh? 
Six months, you haven't found anybody. You might want to find out why. You have two companies, same job description, same basic job. And you go in and you find out, you ask them, what happened to the last person in the position? Well, they started with us after university, uh, they worked in this position at the bottom, they worked their way up, and they've been promoted. Cool. That means there's upward mobility, they treat their people well, they promote from within. Good. Another scenario. Two companies, same thing. And they say, and I say, well, what happened to the last person in the position? Where can this position lead to? Well, nowhere. I mean, the last person who was in this position died. He was in a position 35 years. Okay, now you might say, if you're, if you're motivated by your career, you say, no way, I'm not touching that. But there are people who might say, I just want security. This might be a great position. I can work there. I can have some peace. They'll take good care of me. Everyone's different. Not every secretary wants to be the office manager. Not every salesperson wants to be the VP of sales. Not every lawyer wants to be the managing partner. Many do, but there's always someone to fit into a job. So it depends on your personal situation. But you won't know unless you ask these questions. And it is within your right, and I think your obligation to yourself. One of the things I'm trying to do with this presentation is to help you to empower yourself. If you empower yourself by being a more informed interviewer and you know what's going on, you're going to have more self-confidence. Self-confidence shows. People sense it. If you have self-confidence, you have your dignity. I mean, there are so many people now. How dehumanizing is it that you look for jobs online, you send a CV, you never hear anything, and you wait by the phone or by the email or by your screen waiting for someone. How demoralizing is that? What I'm trying to teach you is to take charge. Take charge of your own destiny to some degree. How many people have a very dim view of sales and salespeople? How many people think sales is really slimy and sleazy? Huh? Sometimes, absolutely, absolutely. Here's the, here's the thing though. Do you know that we're selling every day, every day of our lives. And when we're looking for a job, we are selling. You are selling to the hiring manager the concept that you are their best choice. Now, how do we do that? Sales, I want you to consider, and this is, I think it's cool. Uh, your resume is a sales brochure. You are the product and you are your own sales and marketing representative. A car, let's say you want to buy a new car and you saw a new BMW convertible and you say, oh man, that's cool. You get the brochure, you pin it up on your wall. I want this. When it comes time, would you buy it just based on that brochure? Would you make any major purchase just on the marketing sheet and material? Likely not. You would test drive it, you'd go look at it, you'd learn more about it in person. That's the interview. So when people rely on the resume to get themselves their job, I wouldn't, I wouldn't wait too long. That's not going to be helpful, but that's what most people do. We spoke earlier about uh, when people go to an interview, they don't know how to talk about themselves, so they repeat from the resume. Well, the hiring manager has the resume, so you're not telling them anything new. So you have to be prepared to Talk about yourself. Well, it's the same thing here. The brochure got you in the door. Okay? The resume got you the interview. Once you sit down in front of the hiring manager or the interviewer and they say, tell me about yourself, it is at that moment your resume is garbage. It's worthless. And think about it. First interview. You've been there five minutes and they say, tell me about yourself. You have the whole process that you have to navigate but yet you focused on having a great resume, but nothing more. That's what I'm teaching you today.